Okay, and the third uh, part of this demonstration is we want to uh, build uh, an outside uh, plastic part for this uh, particular system library that we uh, have brought in. It's going to turn all those back on. We want to turn on some other parts. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how uh, we uh, had this design in, in a 2D mode uh, form. And we can either bring that in uh, from a uh, AutoCAD file or even one uh, from Solid Edge because Solid Edge has free 2D drafting. Um, and that anybody can go in and download and so they can uh, you can either bring that in through uh, an AutoCAD file or even one that uh, was designed inside of Solid Edge uh, because we do allow users to draw things in 2D uh, and, and again somebody may take advantage of of just the two free 2D uh, portion of Solid Edge so this was built uh, using that particular tool and so what we want to do is we want to show off the create 3D uh, portion. Uh, we want this to be a synchronous ISO uh, part and all you have to do is simply grab the top view, select new view, select that front view there and hit finish. And what that does is it brings it inside of the part environment and you'll see that you have some dimensions <clears throat> what we call dangling dimensions and what we want to do is we just want to start building this part so you can uh, simply just uh, grab this outside and we're going to grab these these smaller regions and by hitting the space bar you're able to add them uh, to to our list here and we just want to be able to pull this out but we want to be able to utilize uh, the 2d information that was placed out here so we just want to go to a particular point and whenever we do that, you'll see that dimensions now, <clears throat> they start attaching themselves to this part. And at that point, the user can now just grab onto this and just use your scroll wheel to, to change it. We're not going to change the dimension at all. Uh, we just want to show how things uh, actually grow, but you want to leave it at 68. And you can do the same thing for the 50. And you can see that some things, you know, are built symmetrically and some things are not uh, you know and that's that's the way things are designed right but you can see how we have uh, these cutouts were automatically uh, created as well uh, but what we want to do is we want to uh, add some rounding to this to this part so let's go and let's add some rounds and this outside one we actually want to be uh, five millimeters in size uh, but this inside one, we want to be two millimeters in size. So you can see, very quick, easy, be able to add some rounding uh, to that part. And you can also just go back and say, yeah, even rounding doesn't change uh, anything about uh, being able to modify uh, the part. Just be able to show that to him uh, quickly. Now, next, we want to be able to uh, thin wall this part, but we don't want the part to thin wall with those uh, particular cutouts in them. So we'll just go ahead and Again, just tag one and uh, hit the space bar. And what we want to do here is we want to detach those from the particular model. And now we want to simply say we want a thin wall, grab this face, take the default, and then we want to grab this bottom face and we want to turn off coplanar. So you can either hit P on your keyboard or come over here and select this and then move this up. And what we want to do is we want to move it up to this point here that are showing inside of our, make sure we get to the right point there. And what happens is that six millimeter now becomes attached to our part and it is now driving that particular face. Okay. Next, we want to add some uh, protrusions that go down into the part itself. So we want to grab this region here, hit the space bar, grab this other region, using quick pick, 
and we want to be able to push it down into the part but if we do that it's actually going to cut if we pull it up it creates a protrusion but we want to create a protrusion downward so we'd simply just tell the system to go automatically add this inside of here we want to grab again the dimension that is inside of here or our part and you can see our other dimensions uh, coming out into play so even though the dimension was sitting on top and the part uh, the protrusion was actually ha happening at the bottom the dimensions still uh, attach to there okay so it's real quick easy but we need to get our cutout back right so you simply right mouse click on the protrusion hit attach and those cutouts come right back into it and uh, everything looks exactly the way uh, it needs to it's very quick part so we simply want to save this we want to save it to the working and we can um, you can call it cover if you already have one out there just go ahead and, and, and overwrite it but we're just going to place that out there and let's go ahead and close it and we'll go ahead and close that as well now what we're going to do is we're going to place it inside of our assembly so again you can come over here grab the cover drag and drop it in and what this is uh, going to uh, look for is you're going to want to um, mate this bottom face to the top face of your blue sheet metal part and if it goes upside down that's easily uh, changed just by hitting the flip and you'll see that it's going to flip on around and I apologize for my display I don't know what's going on uh, with it but what you want to grab is you want to grab this cylindrical face right here and you'll want to select that circle that hole there and then do the same that cylinder with that cylinder there now at this point we see that we have some interferences right uh, so that tells me our 2d drawing was was wrong so how can we go make some changes well since this easily clean up part I'm going to edit that cover and just like what they would do uh, inside of a 2d drawing and we can go ahead and we can turn off we don't need PMI turned on just like what they would be able to do inside of a, of a 2d drawing is that they were able to simply fence select make sure you don't get that uh, that inside radius we just want to grab these outside uh, pieces right there including these little guys here and we just want to simply move you want to move them it's going to be about two two millimeters is, is all you're going to move it let's say about two millimeters okay so now you can see that we've we can instantly see what the what that interface or no, excuse me interface but intersection actually is and we can see that our our 2d drawing was actually uh, wrong you can also see and tell <clears throat> If you look back here we have an interference as well so we just want to be able to come over here and we can and what we can do is uh, again we might want to uh, be able to turn a few things off and what you can uh, do like what we did before is we can come over here we can set uh, planes of, of our particular part uh, that we want to cut away to be able to see exactly where that interference is actually taking place and we can see it just about right there and then all you have to do is it's a real simple uh, we can we can do an include if we wanted to uh, come over here and do an include and you want to uh, select select the other plane here select that plane to, to draw on 
<clears throat> and we want to include, but let's include with um, an offset in this particular case. And we want to grab, so let's look at this thing normal. There we go. What you want to do is you want to include this top edge and let's just go ahead and offset it 0.5 millimeters that's fine okay so what that's just going to do <clears throat> now we want <clears throat> excuse me we just want to come in here and we want to do an extrude and we just want to select that single face or single uh, selection do an open profile but we don't want to add material we want to actually remove material from that so you can see now that we've actually removed uh, material from there so it's very easy uh, to see you know talk about uh, top-down design interferences how we can easily go through and make some changes uh, with our parts uh, inside of here so we can simply now close and return, and now this moves on to uh, building uh, configuration management uh, portion of our demonstration.